Hello, I'm Odin, and let's make another request. It's Captain America's new shields from Infinity War. I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They'll be making a guest appearance later on in this video. Another request many of you have made is for me to make something without using any power tools. So for this project, I'm just going to use razor knives, a ruler, glue, and some paint. I start by drafting some patterns so I can cut out all the shapes that I'm going to need. I got all my dimensions by grabbing a still frame from the movie trailers. I hand draw the shapes onto poster board and cut them out. I trace the patterns onto some floor mat, which is made from EVA foam. I then cut them out and glue them together with contact cement. Now, the thing with contact cement is that it doesn't stick when it's wet. You need to paint it on and let it mostly dry. Then you can stick the two parts together very easily. Something I didn't think about was how little the shields are going to bow with these straight edge cuts. Right. I'm gonna need to cut these again with an angle. So I cut out the middle seam, but I hold the knife on an angle, and I actually cut out a wedge-shaped strip from around the first seam. Then I can add contact cement again, and I have a much better shape to the shields. To make the front points, I cut a diamond shape from some five millimeter craft foam. I cut a strip right out of the center, and then glue that seam back together so the bow will match the big parts. The outside of each shield has a raised panel pattern. So I cut out another poster board that's half the shield, and I draw out the entire panel pattern for one side of the shield. I have to adjust some of the lines as I go. Then I cut out the patterns that I need and trace them onto three millimeter craft foam. And by cutting out four copies of each piece, I have all the parts I need to decorate both of the shield backs. Numbering the pattern pieces and having a reference would actually help this process a lot, but I was just checking pictures against the real prop and doing my best guess at correct placement. Most of the pattern looked to be one layer, with just the squares on this very back being two layers thick. And I cut a strip of quarter inch foam and glue it to the edges to finish the main shield. I trace the diamond tips and then draw and make new patterns for all the panels so I can glue them on just like I did on the big shield pieces. And once it's all together, I can trim off the excess to make it fit. There are more panel lines on the back side of the shields as well. And thank you, Cap, for holding them up so we can just see them briefly. Now these are a little simpler and have the only indication of a right or left side because there's a serrated cutting edge on one side and not the other. Draw, trace, cut, glue, and trim. Then I can attach the tip pieces to the main shield. I make sure the backside is flush so the diamond of the tip is recessed a little on the front. I cut a couple of tiny wedges of three millimeter foam to glue on for the little spikes that go in the front. And there's a couple of pinchers or fangs on the tip of each of the shields. I make a pattern and cut out four pieces from three millimeter foam. Then I cut out the centers of each to make like a recessed panel. I glue all these back onto three millimeter foam and then cut them out again to make each fang. I trim the fangs to fit around the edges and glue them on. The main shield backs also have panels and detail, but I could barely see them in the trailer, so I deviate a little here. But I still make a pattern, cut some big pieces, and glue them down. One thing to be careful of when you're gluing on big pieces like this is not to pull or stretch the foam because you can actually warp the final shield or have extra foam in a spot and end up with a wrinkle. I like the texture of the floor foam framed by the craft foam and adds something to the look of the back without additional pieces needing to be made. I picked up a leather belt at the thrift store and I'm gonna cut that up to make the straps that go on the back of the shield. This one belt is enough for all of the straps. I make the pieces so they can go over my hand and around my forearm. To attach the leather straps to the shield, I cut out slots to fit the leather into. And I was careful not to cut all the way through the shield because I don't want leather sticking out the front. And I'll glue these in after I've painted the shield. The belt felt a little too wide for my hand, so I cut some curves into the sides for my thumb and my palm. I start painting with a good coat of Plasti Dip Spray. I love this stuff as a base coat because it sticks really well to the foam, it seals all the edges of the panels, and it smooths the texture out a little bit. I just wish it wasn't raining so I could spray it outside. But now that I'm painting, I can talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace. 
Squarespace is used by a wide range of creative people, musicians, designers, artists, restaurants, and more. Squarespace offers beautiful, award-winning designer templates, so anyone can create a website or online store. Plus, they have award-winning 24-7 customer service, and Squarespace has a unique domain experience that's fully transparent and simple to set up. Go to squarespace.com slash odinmakes to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. With two coats of Plasti Dip now dry, I can start the final painting, which is pretty simple. I mix up a medium gray color with acrylic paints and dry brush all the edges of the panels. Now, dry brushing paint is when you get paint on your brush, but then wipe most of it off on a paper towel or rag so the bristles are mostly dry. Paint will still collect on the edges of anything and it can leave fine streaks on a flat surface. It takes a little bit of practice, but it is actually very easy to do. Cap's shields have a lot of dry brush gray all over them, down the middle ridge and on these big panels too. I dry brush gray on the fronts and the backs of both shields. The spikes and the fangs are both bright silver, which is easy to do with some acrylic craft paint. I also dry brush some silver on the serrated edge on the tips. There are silver panels in between the raised panels on the shields. These may also be true raised panels, but I'm just going to paint them on, doing my best to keep a straight line in the open areas. With all the paint on, I use Gorilla Glue to attach the leather belts. I scored the edges of the leather first, that is, I made many small cuts on the finished leather, so the glue has something more to stick to. I put glue in the slots that I made on the back and push the leather in and set them up so they can dry. The Gorilla Glue foams up a little when it sets, so I'll need to cut the drips off when it's done. To seal the paint in the shields, I spray them with a matte finish clear coat. All the materials I used in this build I picked up locally. I put a part list in the description. And here are my shields from Wakanda. I actually really like the way these turned out, especially considering all the information just came from still grabs taken from the movie trailer. Yeah, these don't fold up, they don't shrink up and everything else like the vibranium ones do in the movie, but I made these as simply as I could. I did this with just a razor blade, some glue, and Fomium. But of course I used Fomium because this is how Odin makes. I want to thank all of my Patreon subscribers. And if you want to jump in and help out, please check out my Patreon page. If you have any ideas for something for me to make, please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. Now, if you watch the trailer closely, when they expand, the geometry of these shapes actually change. They stretch out. I wonder if they'll fix that in the movie.